Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Cryptids and Crafts. I am your host, Famine, from Famine Studios. Here in the uh, illustrious makeshift studio, while Stark stomps around and shakes the table. I hope you're all having an excellent Friday night. Tonight we are going to be talking about the Bigfoot, the great American ape, Sasquatch over in Australia. It's called the Yowie. Uh, closest perceived relative in Asia would be the Yeti. We got a lot to talk about here. There are hoaxes. There are real deal things that are happening. So we're going to get started in a second. <clears throat> I do just want to say, if you're new here, go ahead, hit the subscribe button for more content like this. We do a lot of customs, dioramas, and world building uh, for 118 scale action figures, and we talk cryptids every once in a while. It's a very exciting time. Um, and the skunk ape, absolutely. So let's go ahead and say hello to our friends who are just joining in the channel. We got Bjorn, who was here first. He actually set up the anti-Bigfoot perimeter around. Thanks so much, Bjorn. We appreciate that. And then playing with my 375, one of my other patrons, along with Bjorn, stopping in with the Shmeppy Lock. This guy keeps showing up everywhere and telling people what to do. My goodness. We got Pirates of the Galaxy here on a late night. Good to see you, Pirates. Thanks for coming in. And we were just saying words. And Passport Figures and Games. Thank you, thank you. Many, many appreciated. There's your too sweet for your troubles. We've got Red here. How's it going, Red? Mickey popping in, 375 up top. Timbo, how's it going? Uh, Bjorn may have a hairy sister or a sister that just wanders through the woods. Let's see. Hello, hello, welcome back, welcome back. We're gonna be talking about that big hairy son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, and let's see, we've got Tank. Fa hey, Tank, how's it going? Fam, I love this cryptid idea, just wanted to say Wanted to tap in and say what's good and tell you look into Kandahar Giant and other giant sightings in the area. I can absolutely do that. Um, I have to tread softly on the Kandahar Giant thing because there is some um, geopolitics slash religious undertones in certain things. And so I have to walk carefully on that line, whether or not I touch that story. We'll see, but I am familiar loose enough uh, with what you're talking about and the other giant things. Hey, Wenzilla, have you checked your mail today? You should check your mail today, Wenzilla. Wenzilla, you should check your mail today. Hey, have a good night, Mickey. Thank you for stopping in. Love you, man. Too sweet, me. Uh, all right. We'll put that up for a second. So, like I said, today we're going to be talking about Bigfoot. Um, we can we can start. I kind of want to get a feel for what people think. So just give me a... Um, in the chat, or if you're watching the show later, you're catching the rerun, drop down right now, start of the show, whether or not you think Sasquatch or Bigfoot is real. Just just if it's real, not what you think it is or whatever. I just want to know if you believe it's real or not. So drop that in the chat. We'll get started. I, I will I will fill you guys in on my thoughts in just a moment here. My beautiful Mama Rosie coming over and uh, making sure that I'm running the show the right way right now. Hi, gorgeous. Yeah, oh, you're so beautiful. And I think we're going to do a little bit of a lot of everything tonight. I think we're just going to be painting and adding details on a bunch of stuff. We've got the the tower up there that we could work on, the, the uh, observation shack. Um, we've got some pipes we can dry brush, which I actually think that's where I'm going to start, is on a pipe. So... I'm just going to grab this right here and start setting myself up for the stream, doing a little bit of weathering and whatnot. Okay. Let's see. We've got some comments already here. Axion says he knows it's real. I'm going to pick your brain about that in a little bit. Let's see. We got Red thinks that there's things in the woods, all kinds of things. True. Very, uh, very neutral an answer. Real, we don't, not what we think it is. Doesn't, uh, doesn't believe Bigfoot's real, but wants to. Tanks, Bigfoot, and Yeti is rare. So far, undiscovered species. That could be. 
We've got a task force still stomp through the woods of the wilderness, giving wonder to all who see him. There certainly are some weird things in the woods. Now, uh, where I stand is that I think about probably 95% of all, we'll call them Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti. Just got to make sure the mustache is on point for the news clip later that they play when I get like mauled on a camping trip next year. And they're like, well, he was killed by a Bigfoot, what he said. So I think about 90 to 95% of all the sightings and cases out there are something else. I do think that there are undiscovered species that live out in the wilderness that we haven't come across that may be large apes. You know, North America is like the only continent that doesn't have a large primate. That doesn't seem to track. It doesn't seem right. However, with so many of the, especially with more modern technologies and boys and girls, children of all ages, it's just a bed. You guys sleep in the same spot. <laughs> Sorry that boys are yelling. With the technology that we have today, we're finding more and more of these tracks that are found where things made from wood and cast, you know, some of the hair samples are somebody's got their dog hair and deer hair that they put together to make a hoax to get the attention. These people that have claimed to shoot Bigfoot and, and have it, you know, their body in a freezer. The hoax has been perpetrated so many times people still buy into it because, you know, like, like Timbo said, people don't believe that it's real, but they really want to, right? So... It's it, For me, it's a case of that. I think that there's certainly something out there, whether or not it belongs to the ape family, I don't know. I know there's something goddamn big out there in the woods that is not anything that we're familiar with. I think that that's a pretty solid basis of belief. But as far as Bigfoot being exactly what we think it is, I don't know. I don't think so. I'd like to be proven wrong, though. This is one of those things where I'm like show it to me like let let me see it so and and that's the thing too is north america did lose its horses we've killed plenty of species driven to them extinct driven them to extinction um so it's not far-fetched of an idea to think that possibly quite literally we've driven these creatures so within a you know blink of of what it is right We can do Loch Ness another time. I've got plenty of theories out there. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Loch Ness another time, maybe later in the show. Something is definitely out there, says Bjorn. I, I, am, I am in agreement with that, that there is something definitely living in the woods. Now, whether or not, like I said, it is a great ape that is related to mankind or not, I don't see it enough in the facts that are there, the present of things um but we'll see oh the w oh the thing that we're not supposed to say got it got it got it um rhymes with bendigo so speaking of things with mange i threw together some slides because i feel like this is just gonna be more talking because every time there's a picture of fucking bigfoot it looks like Somebody was waving in front of a camera and it, you know, it's blurry. There's maybe that's its power. Maybe it's a multi-dimensional being and it just affects things. But I, I threw together some pictures. Um, we can, we can absolutely go over them. Like the main one, the main one that everybody knows is the Patterson Gimlin film. That's the, you know, it's like 60 seconds. It's the, the most viewed Bigfoot footage ever. There have been, both those men went to their deathbeds and said, this was real. However, um, one of the guys was notorious for bullshitting all the time. Another guy, uh, they had a falling out, so we don't know specifically what went on there. But both those dudes went to their deathbed saying, hey, you know, this thing that was on this footage is real. Now, somebody in in their circle decided to come out and say basically like, oh, I was hired to make a Sasquatch suit. We used footballs and all this stuff, but there are people who have studied this footage and you guys know it. I actually can't show it 
on here. If this video uh, doesn't get demonetized or anything like that, I can't show it um, because they have rights on it and everything. Like it's it's a whole complex thing. That's why uh, you really only see it on like Discovery and History Channel because they can afford it and have licensed it out. Whole thing. Anyway. Um, but basically that 59 second clip, um, I can show a still from it. Let me go ahead and bring that slide up here. We're going to add that to the stage. So uh, we'll go back to the first one. Of course, I had to make fun of my European friends. You know, instead of Bigfoot, it's Big Meter. And a uh, bit scary, isn't it? All right. What's this all about then? Had to, had to make fun of them. So that's actually a shot from the Patterson Gimbal film. And, uh, excuse me, Gimlin film. And that's like the most notorious Bigfoot photo. Um, for those playing along with the crafting, I'm using Army Paints Gunmetal. I have this pipe that I made and it's got some PVC connectors on it, some cardstock tubing, um, some cereal box made into straps. We're just gonna give this a nice metallic dry brush. So at the time, you know, this was the most, this is the most realistic looking thing the special effects suits and creature suits at the time that this was made was nothing near this level of detail there was no way um in their defense and and i, I i'm not whether or not they were full of shit whatever this is that they've got on camera it was either completely completely out of you know somebody who was just the best maker on the planet that had been undiscovered and remains undiscovered to this day uh, that made this suit or they caught a creature on film they caught bigfoot sasquatch whatever you want to call it the yeti the great skunk ape on this film now some of the items that they brought back with them from this expedition because their expedition was to capture bigfoot on film you know the cameras were rented for that express purpose it was a whole thing um, I have seen the stabilized version of the video. I can't share that either um, if I want to make any coin off of this. So, I mean, if enough people subscribe to Patreon tonight, I, I won't lose sleep about uh, <laughs> I won't lose sleep about it. I'll throw that video right up on the screen. Um, that said, let me pop that link down there. Bjorn, if you could drop it in the chat. Uh, but yeah, it's patreon.com slash famine studios 262. We've got multiple tiers. There is a free tier. Please sign up. Helps. Uh, Definitely helps out the channel. And again, when I come up against these things where I'd like to include stuff in the videos that I can't, well, if uh, if I'm doing all right on the Patreon end, I don't have to worry about the monetization of the video and worry about them taking away the ability to earn uh, from views and advertisements and stuff. So that's there. Now, I did see the stabilization and the big, the big rumor, the big innuendo, whatever you want to call it, was that, oh, they built this, they modified a ape suit and they, they they modified ape suit and they used footballs in the shoulder and to make the breasts and all this. And you can't duplicate some of the things that you see in the footage, right? You can't duplicate today with the tech that we have that level of realism for what it was. So again, like I said, whoever did this either has to be just the best They've got to be the best in the world and their talent was, you know, completely beyond their years and, and it was just unspoken and they're gone and it's a shame or that is something, right? And I hate, hate's not the word. I don't like doing the back and forth things. It's like either or. Well, in this case, it's quite frankly, either or. Either it was the best fake ever or that's really something. Now, the legs flex in the video, the quads flex the you know the, the way the arms swing they're naturally longer than human arms they don't have that uh flop that would have if somebody was holding something to make their arms look more extended it's got the cranial ridges the way it walks the way it looks the the brow line on the face those are not things that were commonplace in what was essentially something that was talked about in myth back there um the sightings go back to Native Native American cultures and customs and probably all over the world in other cultures. The the Patterson-Gimlin film that you're looking at here is 1967. Um, 
but it's not even a case of sightings. There were tales from tribes that stated that they were living with these creatures, that they, they encountered them. Some tribes were scared of them and had come into violent contacts with them. And there are plenty of stories, uh, you know, well-documented tales from people who were possibly assaulted by these things or an angrier cousin or something of what we consider Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Not a problem, not a problem. Um, so they, the, the sightings, it's not, I don't even know if you'd call it a sighting, right? Because it's, they, they've been around and in recorded history for ages. There are cave paintings with natives that show, you know, giants among them, large hairy giants. Now, uh, there were petroglyphs at Painted Rock that had giant hairy men or like big ape men looking, uh, you know. So if you want to check those out, you can absolutely look it up. It's the, um, heh, it's the petroglyphs from Painted Rock. And there's plenty out there, plenty of reproductions and things like that. But there, like, there is tales in history that's not, you know, whitewashed history. You know, some, some dude didn't come over from England. He's like, aha, I found it. <laughs> it's been something that's been seen, right? It's been something that's been recorded. And there are, you know plenty of tribes and plenty of native peoples who discuss this and hold this in reverence that there are these creatures in the forest that are giants. <laughs> they're, they're large. Um, now how, there's, there were some sightings that can be explained off in the 1800s. And I want to handle these as delicately as possible because these sightings they, how do I, how do I say this? These sightings were disproven as being some type of creature because of what was going on at the time. There were some sightings that have been recorded and refuted in the 1800s that worked out to have been people seeing what they thought was an ape man in the forest. And it turned out to be a slave that had escaped from the South and tried to make their way to the north. Um, there were a couple of people that were captured because of the sightings uh, of that, that people thought it was a ape man and because culturally fucking Americans and other countries were the worst when it came to the treatment of African Americans, they simply went, aha, see, it must have been these fleeing slaves because they, um, you know, bear the appearance of this description of a dark thing moving through the woods trying not to be seen well yeah no shit because you know down south they were fucking enslaving people and trying to kill them and the north was trying to set up a safe haven for them but the fact that that's the the breakdown of some of these cases the older older reports especially in the 1800s the late 1800s right around the end of slavery and when things were being broken up it's it's a shitty thing to have to consider, but it is something to consider that it was people regardless of their color and appearance, right? Um, and yeah, Theodore Roosevelt was a... So Teddy, Teddy was a weird dude, because like on one hand he was rad, on the other hand, kind of okay with anti-Semitism. Um, he had a lot of reverence for Native Americans, despite, you know, kind of leaning towards like, though, they have so much to learn from us instead of us. Damn. Instead of us trying to learn from them. Oh, son of a bitch, that hurt. Um, but he knew his animals. He was a very accomplished hunter, uh, naturalist, a conservationist before conservationists were a thing. Um, he gave us the greatest national parks. He gave us the Adirondacks, you know, the, the whole, the whole of what he did. Um, absolutely fantastic. Dude was kind of cool, but also, um, kind of the shits, right? So, like I said, he knew specifically what he was, uh, you know, specifically what he was doing. 
I would believe that if he recorded something like that, he surely th thought he saw uh, what he thought he saw, right? I don't think Teddy Roosevelt was in the business of, um, you know, was in the business of making up lies. I don't think he was in the business of making up hoaxes or perpetrating hoaxes. I just unfortunately don't think that, uh, I, I don't know, right? Because aside from the recorded account, Teddy didn't, you know, shoot it. He didn't get a hair sample. He didn't get anything like that unless there's evidence that I completely missed out in my years of, you know, following Bigfoot and being fascinated and watching all the late night documentaries at 3 a.m. in the History Channel where they're like, Bigfoot, alien or hibachi chef from, you know, this, this downtown L.A. restaurant. Let's check it out. And, you know, they give you all that weird shit and you're like sitting there watching it going, what the hell is this, right? Now, other recorded sightings and video footage, they all exist out there. Um, there was this, that's, I believe this is the most recent one from, I want to say Colorado. Am I wrong? Axion, you may, you may have a tighter grip on the timeline here, but if you guys can see, oh, let's go back one. You guys can see there's red circles around this this footage clip and they think that this is just uh, a sasquatch that was like leaning out of the way of a tree um you know they can't be can't be identified it was picked out and that's the thing is these these pictures and footage aside from the 59 second video a lot of the times these things are very 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 well hidden um you know, where you have to like trace out things on a tree, uh, on a tree to show people if they're looking at it, they don't see what's there, but it's one of those layers. Like if you stare at it long enough and someone keeps telling you, you're looking at a Bigfoot, you might actually be like, Oh, I do see it. Yeah. 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 You know, somebody points out something to you on a road trip and you can't see it. And they're like, you know, look to the big tree in the middle and then look over, you know, to 11 o'clock and then down about a, two inches and you'll see that, you know, that that box that's sitting there. I keep telling you about, oh, shit, there I see it. So if, if I didn't have that circle because I was staring at the original header on the news site, I'm looking and looking and I'm like, is that supposed to be it? Like, I don't get what the shape is, but then, you know, I see it all circled up here and you can see the head, the curvature of the body leaning forward, Colorado. Um... Uh, Oh, Redwoods in California, right? Colorado is the train ride that people think it's uh might have been a hoax for the the four wheeling company. Um, I remember reading about that because there's like a Sasquatch four wheel company in the area, and so people think that the the one in Colorado where all the people on the train took the pictures and video is that it was uh them trying to drum up basically business. Um. They've said, no, you know, that's not what we do. That's not what we're doing. But, you know, it could be something, right? Could be something there to that. And for those playing along with the crafting end of things, let me just pull myself up, make myself big again here. Because I am. Uh, I've just been dry brushing and adding some streaks to this pipe. We're going to add a couple of different... Uh, colors on here and then we'll add some rusting and weathering before we get this set aside and work on the other pipe. Um, so let's bring that back up. Let me put myself here. How did I do this? And whatever. You guys don't need to see my face though. But again, this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, we can see, we can see the shape. We can see the, the, the break. We can see what's there, but also that could be, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to dock your, your, uh, your cookies. I'm taking away two cookies from you, <laughs> but it's it's one of those things and yeah that that's also it like i i'm on the fence because i absolutely want i want to believe bigfoot's real right i want to i want to think yes that there's a great ape out there there's a scientific um you know there's a scientific explanation and there very well could be i have met primates i've met 
um, chimpanzees, and quite frankly, they scare the dog shit out of me. Um, the two chimpanzees that I met in my life were both insanely clever um, and scary, right? And if there's a big old ape out there, I've seen what gorillas do when they start fighting. I've seen what, you know, they're capable of when they are aggressive. And yeah, people are just as scary. But the idea that that thing's just chilling out in the woods and if I don't see it, I don't know it's there. Um, <laughs> you know, that, that's, uh, that gives me the chills. That freaks me out a little bit. And that's, that's just me being a big sissy. Um, but there's so many sightings, and like I said, I, I think a lot of them are either mistaken, mistaken identity, and also like hoaxes. You know, people want to be part of a story, um, and I, I think I covered a little bit of this back when we did the Mothman episode. Is people, when things start to happen, they want to be included in it. They want to, oh yeah, yeah, I saw it too. I, you know, I was taking my trash out, and this big thing wandered through my yard, and I thought to myself, damn, that doesn't look like a bear. That looks like uh, that might be that Bigfoot. And then I went and looked at the tracks and they were bear tracks. But man, I, I never seen a bear walk like that. You get a lot of those stories and you get the cats and kittens who are, you know, sauced off their ass. And, uh, you know, they start telling their story. And it's like, yeah, we were out drinking moonshine in the yard. And then this thing came wandering through. You guys were hammered, right? And it's not to state that everybody is wrong or their reports are wrong it's just that there's a huge majority of these things where it's not not easily validated um there are plenty there are plenty of like reports from i can't even believe i'm going to say this but reputable sources like police officers firemen you know lifelong conservationists hunters people of that nature um that have claimed to see Sasquatch, right? So you start looking at that and you go, all right, well, these people are reputable. They've, they've seen these things that other people have claimed to see as well. And that starts to add validity to this. Now they certainly have seen things, right? I'll never, if you tell me you saw something, I'm going to believe that you actually saw a thing. I don't, I'm not going to be like, you didn't say anything. There was nothing there. That's, that's horseshit. That's so dismissive and rude of anybody who claims that they saw anything, whether you come back from, you know, a hike and say you saw a red fox in the middle of the day, or you, you know, saw a guy in a, you know, women's, you know, what normally would be considered a woman's bikini sunbathing. Like, I'd be like, oh shit. All right. Well, that's fucking rare to see in the woods. Um, so I don't want to dismiss these sightings, but then there are times where you just hear people who are unreliable or they're the local character and it's tougher to take them seriously on these things because of you know the known things that we know about them yes they're you know they're notorious for wanting the spotlight or they they're constantly bringing something to the attention of the public and you know it it's one of it's one of those things man where it's like i i desperately want to believe that sasquatch is real i love the idea that there's these giant you know apes out there there are these creatures that are left to their own devices and they've managed to avoid humanity and then i start to think well damn they should have if they're even remotely close to people and they're that intelligent why are we allowing in certain states people can still technically legally hunt them right so even if it's fake why doesn't the ecological group go you know or the conservation societies of each state get together and go okay if this is real it's illegal for you to shoot it. You will be fined. You will be thrown in jail, whatever it is, because these are, you know, sentient or autonomous or whatever you want to call it, creatures that are maybe simian, maybe, you know, genetically related to human beings. So why is it perfectly okay to hunt them? Not you. You don't, you don't get hunted, buddy. Yeah. No, anybody tries to hunt you, I'll fuck them up. Deal? deal okay um finding shoes or clothing in the wood is weird yeah um yeah you find anything in the woods and it's strange because the woods eats up shit quick that's the other thing where people go well how come um how come there's no bones 
Well, have you ever come across the skeleton in the woods? It's usually in terrible shape to begin with, unless you stumble upon it right away. Um, one second, I'm answering an important text message. Um, but like, yeah, you, you, you come across the skeleton in the woods and it's mostly gone. It's been chewed on by mice. Nature's reclaimed it. There's mold growing on it. That's slowly eating it. Like the forest takes things back so rapidly. Like nature is quick, man. Um, which is why people, when they go hunting for shed antlers, which are not exactly the same material as bone, but they are close enough that I'll use them for this example. You got to hit during the season because they get eaten up by other animals quick. Very, very quick, very muy rapido. They vanish and they're gone. And that's just that. Um, so like the whole, the argument of like, well, we never found any bones. We don't have any skeletons. Uh, so we have to kill one or catch one. Um, buddy, if you get this thing on video, that's going to be more than enough proof to let the right people get their hands on it. So that notion of like, oh, I'm going to be the guy that shoots Sasquatch or, you know, I'm going to take care of it. I see that thing in my yard. I'm shooting it. It's like, that's such a dumb mentality. And yeah, finding clothes laying in the woods, if you do find them, is usually because people were boning and set their jacket down and lost it. Or um, or if you're like kids in my neighborhood, you just leave your clothes on my backyard and keep walking through my yard somehow. But now we have bear in the area, so people don't necessarily cut through the backyards anymore. Now there's dogs and the neighbor's dogs, and it makes it a little scarier for these, uh, for these children to use my backyard as a cut through goddamn delinquents <laughs> um and it's like with with scat too like we don't know what their diet is are they omnivorous are they carnivorous probably omnivorous if we're being honest or or vegetarian herbivores they would their poop would break down it probably wouldn't be you know like human shit like it wouldn't be with all that processed stuff we eat. like come on it's not going to be the same their diets, their bodies are not going to handle things like ours. So that's one of those things that I've always detested about the Bigfoot argument is like, well, if we haven't found bones and we haven't found droppings, okay. <laughs> you know, like that, that doesn't really prove anything other than we haven't found bones or droppings. Um, those are harder to find in the woods. It's not like owl pellets that we know of where they, you know, leave perfectly preserved little skeleton kits you can put back together when you find one dried up on the ground. Um, you know, we assume that they have some sort of digestive system and, you know, if that's the case, they're going to break down their food closer to what primates do if it's to believe that they're primates and, and it goes from there. So that one is always like, even if I'm a skeptic believer, you know, which I lean more towards to, um, I don't think that, uh, that lack of waste evidence proves anything or disproves anything. I think it's a non sequitur, uh, if that's the right phrase, of just it doesn't fucking matter, right? It's not relevant to the argument of whether or not Bigfoot is real or not. Um, but there's just so many reports, like I said, of people who are, quote, reputable, right? Um, people that are cops, you know, not the guy who was, we drink shine up in the mountain, see it all the time, you know. Uh, just, I, I did a few with me and we look out across that valley and you just see that big hairy man moving along and I wave to him and he waves to me, and keeps going. Like, you, you hear those stories and it's just like, damn, you, oh, buddy, how much of that shine have you had? <laughs> Just getting some more of this uh, silver on there before I switch up the different metal paint to drag my knuckles right through it. Yeah. Um, so there's been like so many reports in America. I, I was reading there's been like upwards of 10,000 recorded recorded sightings and that's where people come forward and say hey i've seen bigfoot this is what happened this is where i saw it here's whatever proof i have be it cast feet or 
um, you know, footprint castings, hair samples, uh, you know, photographs from their game camera, photographs of, you know, from their, their vacation trips where you see something on the side of a mountain, but it's hard to tell because there's no nothing in the foreground in order to differentiate the size. It's, it's a weird thing, right? There's... There's so much that can be explained about Bigfoot and can be explained away about Sasquatch, but then there's all these other things that can't, right? Like <laughs> how uh, somebody in the chat had mentioned a little bit earlier of how it was... Somebody in the chat threw... Boy, my train of thought got derailed with all this Harry and the Henderson talk. About them actively hiding or every video coming out was blurry. And that's the thing, right? Like, I have an iPhone 7. It's not the best camera in the world, but it's leagues better than what the Patterson uh, tape has, right? And it's got built-in image stabilization and everything. That's an old ass phone. A lot of people have newer phones than me. So how come it is that they're taking these pictures on their phones or their cell phones or their tablets or whatever? And these things have way better cameras than my iPhone, which is, you know, six years old now, six generations old. And my pictures look better, but they're somehow still look like it's from a hot potato that, you know, came out of the microwave and they're not sure how to hold it anymore. They don't know how to use it. Yeah, there's the distance thing, but with image stabilization and all these, you know, zoom features and the better megabytes per camera, and there's actual like physical zoom on cameras instead of just digital, it doesn't make sense that they all kind of look like Shaditsky. Um, that's that's one of those things that sticks out to me and stands out. It's like, okay, these things are being photographed. So why are all the photographs still shitty? Is it something about them? Do they disrupt? cameras are we are we taking it with the completely paranormal or spiritual idea that they're not from here in the way that maybe they're you know aliens or some type of intergalactic you know visitor or something like that i don't know and i, I like i said i'd love to think that they're real but then you go down the route of okay we we take uh we take these cases seriously. And someone said, Hey, I saw Sasquatch. Um, you know, he was on this hill. I saw him three hours ago. Let's go. They get there. There's no footprints. Okay. Were they climbing in the trees? Well, they look up, there's no weight bearing branches. It starts to get like that. Um, So on this slide, uh, this picture here was back in 2017, the top photo. Um, it's from a game camera in Pennsylvania. The official word from the local NCON team and the, you know, environmental groups say that's a young bear cub with mange. However, dimensionally, those limbs are way closer to that of a primate than what a bear would have. So the notion that, the notion that, hey, this is, uh, you know, it's a fucking, it's, a, it's just a bear. It's a bear with manger. Anytime you see a Bigfoot, it's simply just a bear standing up on its hind legs. Uh, doesn't track, right? Because there's, you know, a bear with mange, even, even a bear without its hair, even a bear without its hair does not look like the standard belief of definition of a bear. Um, talk about the swamp ape down in Florida and Georgia. And I think um, one of the Carolinas, they talk about the swamp ape, probably South Carolina. They talk about the smell, right? It's, it's an atrociously smelling creature. Um, it smells worse than a skunk, but has a skunky smell to it. All right. Well, if it's not a skunk, can we capture odor? You know, can we capture moisture in the air that would indicate what the smell is? Uh, is it rotting carrion? Is it because it's a, a prey animal or a predator? 
maybe it smears whatever on it so it covers its scent. Like to me, that's a fascinating question. I don't know if it's been answered, but I feel like if something, uh, there's actually one, that's why I've been going outside with the dogs and not getting mad when sometimes they don't step out into the yard. Um, because there's been a bear in our area and it's younger, but it's not lanky like that even. And this is just like, I just woke up from hibernation two days ago and he does not look like that long. That looks like a chimpanzee if, if I'm being completely honest. And if they told me, Hey, somebody's chimpanzee escaped or, you know, somebody let a chimp loose in the woods, you know, 10 years ago and he's just been out there doing his thing. I'd be like, yeah, that's, that's a chimp. Um, but I, I don't discredit that either. Like I've, I've seen the, the bears with mange where the like furs all gone. Holy fucking nightmare fuel. No, thank you. I never want to see that. Okay. This was a brown bear. Um, right now I'm going to start on the rust effect. So I like to do splotching a black first in some of the areas. So I'm going to go ahead and get that, get started on that. And I'm going to be using a sponge, two different types of sponge. And I keep them right here in my little, little fancy, uh, little fancy zip drawstring bag. Um, I've seen some bears in person and I've seen, unfortunately, I've seen some on the side of the highway. And I saw them when I was a kid in the Carolinas where they have a place where you can go and feed them dog food. Um, kind of hate that I went and did that as a kid, but tis what it is. I don't, I'm not really a fan of zoos. If it's a um, conservation type place where they take in animals that can't be returned to the wild or are too injured and will never be able to go. And it like benefits the research and stuff like that for them. All about it, but... I don't know, something about zoos bugs me and creeps me out. Um, you know, we just throw them in a thing and go, hey, come look at this guy. And we we do. We pay money and we go and look at this guy. And it's, it's I don't know. I don't want to get too much on my high horse right now. Um, same with circuses. Not a fan, you know. But, yeah. So bear are, bear are, are big. They're fucking no joke. Polar bears are terrifying. Absolutely the scariest, scariest bear out there. They are known to be aggressive. They are known to not fear people whatsoever. And actually, and if you're still here, I you you had mentioned you know that that Bigfoot's real, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Throw throw something in the chat. We can absolutely have the discussion because I am curious. Because again, if if somebody got something to bring forward for me that could sway my opinion and also give you know us a, a scoop as to what you know parameters you use to come to that conclusion, I'd, I'd be happy to hear it. Yes, they do, Bjorn. Um, you have to be armed in certain parts of the, uh, the North and South. It's North Pole, as them, right? South? North Pole. I don't know. Uh, where it's really fucking cold and there's polar bears, you have to be armed in certain towns because they do not fucking play. There's no, oh, just get a stick or bang a baseball bat on the door. They don't care. They'll go right through that door. They'll climb right in. I've seen them push people's windows in, pull windows down on trucks, try and rip people out. Um, a friend of mine, Jamie, uh, that recently passed away, he was quite the adventurer and like he wanted to go to a town and see the bears himself. So he went and found a place to stay, got a job that covered his rent and got to see the bears. But man, they are fucking scary and no joke. Montana is bear country. I believe that. And like I said, I'm just using the sponge, by the way, to just tap on some flat black to get some spots to create basically a base to make the uh, the orange and stuff pop when it's modeled. Three experiences. 
two sightings, one interaction with an intelligent creature in Algonquin territory. Let's take that from the back first. Um, you talk about the intelligent creature. Was that due to signaling? Did you have a, what could be described as a conversation? Because I know that there is a recorded series of sounds that have been proven that they sound like they're primate in origin. They've been proven not to be doctored or fake. That is a somewhat intelligent form of communication. However, it is not human, but it is primate based. So I'm curious if it was something like that, or if you just had like a kind of the uh, a crow and a human being experience where you give them something shiny, or, you know, they bring you something and you give them something shiny and they learn that way. I am curious as to what the uh, interaction was, if you care to share that with us. Hmm. Make sure I'll do yellow first. I'm going to do use one of those yellows. Using yellow light by Folk Art. It's one of their matte craft paints. Oh, well, that just happened. It's a good thing this is a painting shirt. It is on my chair, though. So give me one second, guys, before we jump in on that message. Um, when I say that just happened, that just happened in every direction here. So let me... Uh, yeah, that shower is going to feel extra good tonight. Get this paint off of me. It's on my phone. None of the pets, though. That's good. Holy crap. <laughs> That's that shit went everywhere. Ooh. OK. I'm just going to model that in on the with the paper towel and some of the spots on that pipe that it got on. Here we go. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Threw a giant rock at the cave, took three guys to throw this boulder got thrown back out three times. So that I believe um, one of the scariest Sasquatch encounters I ever recall hearing. Um, there's a specific island in Canada where people do not go because it is believed to be inhabited by, um, you know, Sasquatch, great ape, whatever you want to call it. And they have had boulders and they've had trees thrown at them. As people get close, branches snapped off and swung out into the water. I absolutely believe that something did that. And um, again, we talk about the territory where they are. And you said it's an Algonquin area. They, the natives in those regions have stated before, like, yes, these things are from here. Yes, they live here. Like we, they are in our tales and our, our, our culture because they were around, you know, I don't think red is speaking specifically to you. I think he was talking about the yellow paint that popped while we were talking. And Wenzilla, yes, it will. If you sign up tonight, it will. And again, that's uh, patreon.com patreon slash famine studios 262. Scrolling across the bottom of the screen. And you know, right now, speaking of scrolling, let's get the thank you up there to my uh, my generous and lovely patrons. We've got uh, Bjorn playing with my 375, Lord of Fla Lord of Thane. Boy, it is so easy for me to speak tonight. And Task Force Wombat, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you showing love. The critters like it too. You guys help pay for things like uh, StreamYard, which um, I've been trying to get my StreamYard condensed with 
the WMC stream yard that we utilize that gets taken care of, but that's a whole freaking process apparently. Um, I'm going to be signing up to a new audio library so that we have a little bit of better music for streaming and also a little bit better music for the long form videos. <laughs> You're just here to look pretty, honey. Um, so I, I wonder, you, you said you've got tracks, um, cast of tracks and photos when you so when you when you do tracks did you guys pull any like fibers were there anything that was non anything that stood out around the track area that would indicate that the the footprints were from something other than a uh you know a, a sasquatch was there anything in the area that might have made you think that hey these could potentially have come from somebody fucking around, maybe somebody trying to pull a hoax or anything like that. Not that I, I think that your tales are or anything. It's just, that's where my mind would be is like, okay, who put this here? Is this somebody trying to fuck with me or is this the general genuine deal? And if you did come across something like that, like that, what made you move past that thought and go, no, okay, I can address this as though it is a, a genuine Squash sighting, I guess the best way to put it, or Yeti sighting or whatever you want to call it. Because I know, like, when some of the first Bigfoot uh, casts were made, the person who made the casts immediately went and opened up a company called Bigfoot and used it all as a marketing ploy. Which leads me to believe that that whole, you know, first casting incident was based on a hoax. And then after that, I'm always trying to, like, quantify that maybe this wasn't a hoax. If that makes sense. Bjorn says that he's had bad experiences with gummies. You can't let the gummy bears beat you up, Bjorn. And those snake gummies that are like five pounds, people can swing those as a weapon. Don't let them do that to you, buddy. Okay. Now we're going to put this away. Now that I've uh, bukkake myself in yellow, yellow folk art craft paint. <clears throat> yeah, I look like I'm jaundiced. Okay, so you found some tracks were definitely faked. When you see where tracks where you've seen them, it's either bear or Sasquatch. So no one would venture to this place. Hope so. Okay, uh, that's that's a valid. Um, that's a very valid point, right? Um, I know that one of the molds and casts that were taken around the area um, where the Patterson. Um, hmm, my goodness, the Patterson Gimli footage was taken was that it turned out it was an elk impression from where an elk had bedded down. Um, so that's again, one of those things where it's like, I try and go through, but again, you, you mentioned if it's a bear or Sasquatch, those are the two animals about those sizes that could, you know, portray that imprint. And as someone who, you know, you, you dabble in this, like you do more research than you're, you're doing field research where I'm just on fucking www.tellmeaboutbigfoot.com. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, what do you look for when you're finding these tracks? What gives you the idea? Like, you know, is it based on somebody said they saw a sighting here or are you that good at tracking where you can go through and just find these tracks and go, Okay, this is what we're looking at here. Cocky of fun. 
It is a late night show, so it could be a Bukaki of fun. I think Wenzilla wanted it to be a Bukaki of fun. I don't know. I'm using this little sponge that I, I think is just the worst. I thought this was going to be a good uh, good use of tidy sponge, and it is just not made for this. So I'm going to switch back over to my other sponge here. Just weathering it and making it look goddamn awful before we weather it some more, make it look even worse. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> and I would assume, uh, Axiana, correct me if I'm wrong, you could probably easily differentiate between a bear track and a Sasquatch track because bears tend to imprint with their claws when they walk. If my junior days of tracking taught me anything, go out for weeks at a time men are listening and knowing the area and the wildlife is going where no one else could ask deep in leech filled swamps um i i don't i don't i don't want to i don't want to be in a leech filled swamp and you know to that you may say well famine that's why you're never going to discover bigfoot and i say to you that's true <laughs> I don't want no leeches uh, anywhere near my ass or my hang down. No, thank you. But listening to nature, that's a very valid point. And, you know, I know one thing is when I'm in the woods and if things stop making noise, I get the hell out of there. Easy to identify. Is it true that they walk in single file as to disguise their numbers? Bears? Oh, that's Tuscan Raiders. I'm sorry. Get it, guys? Because I mainly do the Star Wars thing over here on my channel. Huh? 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 So here I am uh, using the sponge to go over the yellow and black spots. And I'm just buffering it out from the center giving it that rusty appearance like it's blooming off of the uh blooming off the piping and some parts i put it on there and then i take it right off right and i only leave a little tiny bit yeah yep yeah exactly that um you know, you, you don't want to, they have those shoulder cannons, they have the blades, you don't want to get tangled up with a predator while you're in the woods. Um, real ugly motherfuckers. So. Yeah. I've seen Deliverance. I know what happens. If it's that kind of party, it's not that kind of party when Old Famine's there. I'll tell you that much. I'm not looking to uh, look at to spend time with Cletus and his uh, brother, father, father, dad, father, brother. Like, no, thank you, boys.
Yeah. No interest in that for me. <laughs> Despite how many moonshines you get me in or get in me. Well, just making it look grimy, making it look uh, a little less worn down. Now, once they're installed, I will do my usual cocktail of uh, raw sienna ink, high flow acrylic ink, and a couple of washes over it. And that will pretty much give it the full, like, rusted pipe has had liquid uh, running over it. And I think that's really damn cool. I think I want to go a little further on this one. We'll make this the older of the two pipes. Um, yeah. I'm going to really lean into the orange. But I'm going to use a pumpkin wash that I made and it's basically nutmeg nutmeg brown and orange and it's a it's a closer it's a closer why didn't I just do that it's closer to uh, to orange than it is to dark but when it dries it dries up a little more orange Now, Axion, you said you um, <laughs> you said that you uh, had you know the encounters and pictures. Um, what did you shoot on? Was it digital camera? Was it a film camera? I am I am curious. Laying pipe and talking squash. Old Daddy Famine, doing the thing. And I know that I said it's a wash and I'm stippling it on, but you'll see in some spots I'll leave it stippled like that. In other spots, I'll streak like this and I'll just go back and forth until it's feathered. And that just creates a differential in the pipe and a breakup in the, uh, the visual of it. Get down there around the bottom. I think I might hit a little bit of blue on this pipe too. I don't know why, but something's telling me that it needs like a blue on it. Pictures of tracks. Okay. Gotcha. So pictures of tracks. Um, did you do the whole, like, you know, bring a scale out with you and everything? Or was it like, you know, lay out a, a known, a known uh, size of something and then measure against that later when you look at the picture? I've seen people do that for fish or animal tracks or whatever. Because again, you, you might be out in the woods walking. You're not going to have your tape measure with you or maybe you do i don't i don't when i walk i don't i don't bring my tape measure with me at least i try not to didn't know this was going to be a squatch measuring contest Okay. 
And I just added some down streaks of uh, that wash on there on the side that's really going to be facing toward camera each time as I take pictures. And I'll get that inside too, because that's really be showing. Sun's foot next to the track for scale. Um, so you guys did the, the boulder, the boulder thing. Um, were you ever, was that a scary thing for you or was it more of a thing of amusement? Like, holy shit, uh, you know, this boulder keeps coming out of this cave and it takes three of us to move it. Um, and was it like an instantaneous thing where you'd throw the boulder in and boulder would come back out? Or was it like you throw the boulder and come back in a couple of days, the boulder was sitting back outside? Sorry, I've got a million questions, but it's fascinating to me. And uh, yeah, I hope that I'm asking things that other people want to hear too. Okay, I'll let that dry. There's a little bit of this streaking on here. Now I'm just literally using the path that moisture would take running down this pipe. Cool, 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 cool. So we'll uh we'll definitely let that dry as well. Thought about putting a little bit of graffiti on there too. You know, like somebody came out with a paint pen, but I don't think that that's the type of area that would get too graffiti up, at least in my canon, especially with there being checkpoints and it being a specific path. Because again, these pipes are going to be going over in that corner, which I posted some photos of kind of the layout that I have in mind for them. Hey man, you can talk about my moist pipe all day. Could be the next name of my uh, album. <clears throat> so it scared you shitless. Rolled into the cave. You were getting the courage to go in. Ten minutes later, the boulder came rolling out after. Yeah, that would... Um... Yeah, I, I would not... I wouldn't enjoy that, I don't think. It scared, that scared the shit out of me. I'd be like, all right, boys, let's back it up. This cave's occupied. Let's go. Some, something's here. Probably doesn't want us here. Let's move out. But then again, maybe, maybe... If I tried to look at it like that, like, oh, it's playing catch. This is a thing of amusement for it. I might be a little less terrified, but also that sounds, that sounds like a nightmare. Absolutely sounds like a nightmare. Fucking thing rolling boulders back. Three people move. So let's see what else we can put some, put some paint on today. Uh, well, let's do the water tower. Oh, yes. Let's do the water tower. I'm thinking the water tower is going to be a shade of like an industrial blue. And I'm going to brush paint that on there using a couple of methods that I've recently been seeing in videos. So again, this is the water tower, the water tank top with the, the tank lid that you go in there and get the stuff out just extra texture i think first we'll dry brush it with silver so that seems to be a winning winning decision for me with these projects so this will do the shiny silver shining silver it was on an island yeah uh was this in canada or was this in the states
and I'm just dry brushing. Like I said, that shining silver on there. This water tank's a little more new than the pipe system is. I imagine at some point the the residents of uh, of Gimmick wanted to change out the water tank. Can't blame them. You want to make sure your water system's up to date with the best technology that you've got. And even though there was a well and some pipes, they put in the work, you know? Algonquin, California, okay. Um, do you think there's any credence to the tales that people talk about, like, Sasquatch is stealing things from humans, uh, you know, taking shit off their porch or, you know, helping themselves to open trucks. Cause I feel like some of that stuff could just be Algonquin Canada, my brain, sorry, Algonquin Canada. Um, do you think that that is a Sasquatch problem or do you think it's just coincidental that things go missing and then people try and find a blame for it? Because I got to tell you, the first time something went missing and I thought it was Sasquatch, number one, everything would be brought into my house. But number two, anything that ever went missing from my remote control to whatever, and I set something down and walked away and came back and I couldn't find it, I'd be blaming Sasquatch every time. God damn it, Sasquatch. Sasquatch, you son of a bitch. Bring the remote control back. What'd you do with it? I don't know. That's me, though. That's me, though. <laughs> porches yes campsites absolutely but not normal behavior i would um I, I would i would probably uh pack up i would probably pack up again chicken shit when it comes to giant things that could rip me apart um there was that show scare tactics and they did a sasquatch one where they had uh sasquatches attack the camper uh the rv that they were staying in and I either would have had a mental break or I would have, you know, gone away for beating a performer with like a chair from inside the, uh, you know, from outside the camper when I went out swinging. That's so scary to me. <laughs> And was that a case? And, and so I know some people bait them or try and bait them. Was that a case of baiting? Like you guys left something enticing outside in order to have that occur? Or was this just you happened to forget a, a chair or a piece of kit on the porch and came out in the morning and it was it was gone? weathering slapped on here again i'm guessing in my head it's a different type of metal to bake this tank than the other metal is for the pipes why that is i don't know territorial but not aggressive um okay and i guess it, it is a rare occurrence but you know you do hear those stories where like tree limbs and shit get smashed up uh, around campsites and stuff. People hearing ba loud bangs of branches and shit at night when they think that there's a Sasquatch in the area. Do you think that's like a territorial display? Because um, I'm a big bitch. If that happened to me while I was camping, I would be in the vehicle and out of that campground or out of the woods or I would be hiking back uh, I don't know, running scared shitless as fast as I could to get away from fucking tree snapping humanoid ape. 
help themselves out of curiosity. Okay. So they're not like, huh, I'm going to get this guy's, you know, can opener he left on the porch out of spite. It's just a matter of like, oh, what's this? Something shiny. So we could, we could, in theory, we could safely, we could safely leave Bjorn on the porch and they wouldn't just, you know, wouldn't be a case of attack and steal Bjorn. It would be, you know, just a territorial thing. He'd, he'd be fine out there. Um, as far as outright outright fiction goes uh there's a book by max brooks the guy who wrote world war z it's called the evolution and it is a sasquatch book it's a horror um horror science fiction story and it's one of the best books that i've read in a while especially if you want an action adventure um that's very different it kind of gave me jurassic park vibes in a certain way um i recommend it again it's called the evolution the audiobook is also really good. There's a great cast. Nathan Fillion uh, plays the narrator's brother, which was a nice surprise. So if you get the opportunity, you should check that out. Let's see here. We're going to do blue-gray, which I think is about as an industrial color as, we can, as I want to get for this water tank. And yes, Bjorn is sexy. Sexy man. Get out there, Bjorn. Make some friends with Sasquatch. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera down here. And you guys see I've got my palette here. Go ahead and put some of this paint down. <clears throat> and I'm going to use a little bit of water on my brush. Got some clean water over there. So I'm going to thin this paint just a little bit. Tap a little bit off the brush. And now I'm just going to... Uh, Essentially, I'm going to paint it, but I'm not going to hit the edges. I want this to kind of look as though the paint's been flaking off. Or maybe it's, you know, just old. Hasn't been repainted in a while. You know how those industrial things, like go and look under a bridge. Like a newer bridge. Or, excuse me, an older bridge. You look at the layers of paint and shit that have flaked off. And it literally, it starts at the edges and then just flakes its way off. Anti-Bigfoot circle around your tent. Your sister hangs out there and tells him to fuck off. feel terrible for Bjorn's sister because I've never met her and we're just over here like dogging on her. And you'll see me here. I'm like trying to just create inconsistencies in the paint design. I don't want my streaks to go a certain way too much or, or anything like that. We're going to change this music up to let's go to rock. Yeah. 
And for me, uh, that's think, thinking about this Bigfoot thing to circle back to like me being a big scaredy cat and all this and, and whatnot. It's like, I don't think I'd tell anybody for the multiple reasons of, you know, people are going to give you shit. That's going to be something you're always remembered for if you're not super comfortable with that, which means I, I don't care. I'm, I'm the weird artist guy in the neighborhood. Like nothing bothers me too much, but it's the also I kind of have, you know, and not a kind of I do have empathy for these things if they were you know if they are an existing creature that we just don't know about and it's living out there in the world trying to do its best and mind its own business and you know for whatever reason this thing got heated and you know the situation arose and i saw it or or whatever like i i don't know that i'd tell people because i'd want it to be left the fuck alone Because if there's anything that we do know is that people are the fucking worst, right? And uh, I'd rather not have that on my conscience of if I discovered something like that and then some dickhead goes out with his daddy's, you know, 30-odd six and, and shoots this thing. Then I'm the guy who gave away the location of Bigfoot that got shot and killed. Put portrayal in the first Red Dead game. I never. Uh, I don't think I ever got the Bigfoot. In that, a tr isn't that a trophy, like an extra task or something? I don't think I ever did that one. Side mission. Yeah, so it was an option. Could you could you give the Sasquatch a little kiss? Yeah, and that, that's the thing too, is like I, I would again again I'd feel fucking awful if something went and wound up fucking with it. Uh, because I was like, oh yeah, I saw him out there in the woods there and, you know, it was right by that old red cabin that, you know, the, the, the fire department, you know, caught that meth lab at. And then, you know, people are out there fucking around, either run it off of its, you know, safety, its own safe sleeping spot, or they, uh, you know, show up and then wind up hurting it or capturing it. Man who killed Hitler and then Bigfoot. It's a warped flick. Ah. That's reasonable. I think I've got the noise. I think I've got a, a Bigfoot children's book in mind one day, maybe when I'm a little older, um, you know, to share and, and help out, uh, help out kids, maybe use it as a fundraiser for something fun. But like, I remember as a kid reading all the books about Sasquatch and stuff and wanting to like see one and find one and watch all these videos and stuff. Like when all you could see was on Discovery Channel or National Geographic, like, super late at night, they do, like, Bigfoot hours, and, you know, of course, they never find it in the, in the videos, and they'd be like, well, of course, it remains unsolved. Is Sasquatch real? Is it a man in a suit? Is it actually something created by Famine Studios from one of his videos? Hey, have a good time. I see that he just went live for his, uh, late night, uh, 
late night diorama making. So enjoy and thanks for stopping in. Thank you for sharing your stories with us. You're always welcome and uh, appreciate you coming through, my friend. And here I am doing that thing where I keep taking the thing away from the camera. Okay. So I've got that blued up. I want to do a different blue for the bands. Maybe white. Yeah, I'll do I'll do blue on top. <clears throat> But I think I want to do white for the bands. Ooh, exciting. <laughs> what you guys doing? Little dogs just came running out of the crate like something was going on. Rosie's like, I left my headlights on. Hi, Mama Rosie. Come jogging out like that. And again, patrons, I do want to thank you. Um, you guys definitely helped make this channel, and I've been plugging away at... Uh, the items that you guys are going to be receiving for the, uh, the, you know, monthly, monthly item that I'm providing you guys, the world, world building item. I spent like two hours on one of them last night, one of the pieces, just because I was so excited about making something cool for you guys. Um, and it came out badass and I actually, it took a lot for me not to share it and gloat. <laughs> I'm like, oh, look what I made. Um, you know, look what I did. But I, I appreciate you guys and the support, and I can't wait to get these out to you. It's going to be fun. Um, cannot wait to for the people that are in the physical tier. Can't wait for you guys to get the physical sheets. And for the people that have the digital, digital download tier, so you guys can take care of it and print it out whenever you want and add those to your diorama or whatever. I'm excited for you guys to have that in your hands. These are going to look great. They're agnostic, uh, so they're not like, you know, Mandalorian Fortress this way, or, you know, Rebel Hideout over here, or, uh, you know, join the Alliance today. They're, they're ambiguous enough signs, world-building signs and, and details that you guys can put on your displays that I think are going to add, you know, some nice production value to your setups if you want them to. And I think that's pretty goddamn cool. And it'll all be on a sheet so that you can just send it to if you're if you're one of the digital people or you want you'll if you're a, a physical person, you'll also have access to the digital file. So if you want more, you're absolutely able to just send it to um, staples and have them printed out on a sheet. Hello. What are you doing, buddy? You just hanging out down there? Mr. Stark's down here. Coming to visit you, Stuart. Hi, Rosie. I know you're jealous. I'm mama. If I see you petting my son, pet me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I love these dogs. All right. Now I'm doing some white, like I had mentioned earlier. Get a little detail on here. And uh, there's a lot of signage in this setup and a lot of um, generic... And I say generic in the best way, right? It's generic signage, um, markings, world building uh, items. There's a couple of fake business signs that I made, like a restaurant. I made a, a um, exotic foods restaurant sign. And it looks like something you might see in Tokyo or in Blade Runner, depending. But it's ambiguous enough not to stand out as a you know, oh, this is strictly from that fandom sign, or this is, uh, this is, um, you know, something deeply inspired by this other thing. Um, there are a couple of signs with 
Arabesh, which is more of the Star Wars thing, obviously, because it's the language from there. But there will be translation versions available as well that are in English or maybe just some weird symbols that so that it's vague and uh, it doesn't need to be explained off as, oh, that's from this world or that world. So I'm hoping you guys will like that. But I just didn't want to have like Wayland Yutani stickers and, you know, here's a Rebel Insignia and all those things. Like, those are out there and available, and that's cool if that's what you want, but that's the type of world building that I see a lot of people do and people seem to appreciate about mine is the, the not so straightforward aspects of it. So, I wanted to provide some more casual signage and details that you guys can add to your dioramas or your play sets or, you know, whatever you want. Maybe you want to stick it on your phone case. I don't. I don't mind. That's that's your phone case, dude. Do it up. But I wanted that out there for you guys to have and to be able to utilize. Because, you know, you guys, we work hard on this stuff and then, I don't know about you, but I don't want to sit down and hand paint signs and, and stuff like that or hand paint, you know, striping on certain things. I just want to work on the, the other stuff. And so having, you know, an accessible, here's a sheet of decals or here's a sheet of little miniature posters that I can put up around my station or my planet or on my diorama or my playset that can help add a little bit of production value, like I said, a little bit of detail. Hell yeah. Like, I want that out there for you guys. And I hope that you like this this um, this um month's theme and this month's sheets that are coming out. And again, it's going to be out on the 15th. And uh, super hyped. hitting that white banding on there because it's water. I think I'm also going to do white around the studs, the rivets there, but I'm just going to really chase it with a dry brush. I'm not going to go ham on painting the details with it. I think it's just going to be just enough of the dry brush so you can see what was going on there. At one point, maybe it was powder coated, but since then, the white's faded off. You know, it's been taken off. It's just something that helps draw the eye to see some details. Um, I think the ladder is going to be a safety yellow, canary yellow, maybe. Or should I do it red? Lean towards yellow because that's like a universal safety color, right? Yeah, we'll do it in a semi gloss too. Hmm. We'll see. Not gonna let this one explode all over me. Huh. Didn't get me that time. One of the one of the big hoaxes in the Bigfoot community uh, was this guy out of Texas, and he literally hoaxed everybody twice. Which blows my mind the fact that people people uh, followed this dude enough to care the second time, but he essentially claimed he had a Bigfoot body, and it was frozen, 
And uh, when they finally brought it and uh, he said he paid all this money for it, blah, blah, blah. And he, he pulled the, the corpse out of the freezer and they finally let it thaw to get it researched. And it was a costume. It was like a gorilla mask and this other stuff. And he was like, ha ha, fooled you, got all this attention. And then again, same cat comes out and goes, nope, I certainly shot a Bigfoot. I've got it here. I'm going to take it on a world tour. We're having it independently tested in another lab just to prove it. So he goes and has all this done, allegedly, and uh, takes the Bigfoot on tour. And then it's exposed that the costume was designed. It was a costume, and it was designed specifically for him by a, uh, a theater company, a, a production company that makes, you know, really good practical effects. And he said that that's because he has the, the body, but he didn't want to take it on the, on the road because he was worried about theft. And then it's real, and he shot and killed Bigfoot. And uh, that it was, you know, again, proven to be a hoax. And it's like, why Why do people keep falling for that? Like, especially that dude. I don't know. It blows my mind. Because I feel like the fake Bigfoot guy would be the last guy that we trusted in a community of people that believe in these, you know, strange and wonderful critters. If they are are true, why why in the wide world of sports, like as much as you want to believe that dude, why, why would uh, you know, why would you take take his word again? Like the UFO community, they had one guy who was giving them information for years. It finally came out that he was he openly admitted he was, you know, being fed information by the feds to share with the community as a misinformation campaign. Like it's been a proven thing that they have that. And no one ever believed him again. And he was like, no, I've got some stuff that's real. Like, you know, I can guarantee this 100% of the community just didn't care. Didn't want to hear what he had to say. And he got all butthurt about it. But it's like, yeah. Why are you surprised that nobody wants to believe the guy that was like, oh, hey, by the way, I've been taking money from the feds to tell you guys lies for a long time. I just wanted to come clean. Um, like, why would you Why would you want to believe that guy? So it's like in my brain, I'm like, why would people believe fake Sasquatch mask and rubber feet guy again. But they did. They do. I guess that's their prerogative. Bjorn, is it steaks? Is it steaks in your freezer? I have been craving a steak. I don't know if my iron's low or whatever, but man, I have been craving just like a nice, nice mid-rare piece of prime rib with a baked potato you know, maybe some nice roasted asparagus or Brussels sprouts. Beautiful garlic butter on top. Maybe a little horseradish on the side. Nothing too crazy. But I actually eat way less beef now in my 30s than I did my whole life. So every once in a while I just get a craving for steak and I'm like, oh, I want it. Bigfoot burgers. <laughs> hey, there's your a business in your in your world. Bigfoot burgers. And then people always question: Is it the burgers that are made of Bigfoot, or are the burgers made by Bigfoot? And I'm just, uh, let you see this here. I'm just painting the treads on the, uh, the ladder. And I'm going to come in and hit the, uh, edges with silver to distinguish that highlight. That they've been stepped on and worn and walked on. And I'm also going to touch up the black spots where I keep fucking up. <laughs> There's a really hairy fellow in the kitchen. 
Chef Chewy. <laughs> Gordon Chewy instead of Gordon Ramsay. here front face here just to make that pop a little bit more front of the ladder steps to rungs the rungs of the letter as it were Hey man, how's it going? How's the Harry show? Um, I'm still Harry. Got myself covered in yellow paint. We talked about Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Oh. Yeah, it's it's getting more expensive to uh, eat meat that's you know number one not super processed. And I'm like, I'm a guilty guy when it comes to that. I love pepperoni. Cured meats like salami, ham, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's just the price of produce is getting more and more expensive. Produce, meat, I should say. Game, animal, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the quality is also going down too. I've noticed the quality of chicken has been horrible since COVID. And I know it's because, I know it's multiple reasons, but one is all those poultry farms that they executed every chicken that they had um and then now they're in a rush to play catch up and keep product on the shelves it's subpar meat um what color should we paint that lid i kind of want to do striping on it like caution striping i don't know why mm. nah i know what we'll do mm. i think it should be hmm It's a tough one, guys. Uh, this rock music that's playing, somebody's got to tell me they can hear the hook from Boys Don't Cry in there, right? Like, it's definitely inspired by that. Like I can't I can't be that like I'm losing my head my mind that much Or local college has gotten some footage pretty hard to refute. It's passion chasing Bigfoot. That's cool. Um, I know somebody who uh, had an encounter 
involving a tree. They've since written a book about it, um, their experience with, with Sasquatch and Sasquatches in the region here. There are a lot of, uh, a lot of reports in Whitehall. And I think there's actually like a museum. There's a couple of statues, you know, to honor it. Oh my goodness. Shoulders starting to act up on me. Hmm. Let's take this one. I actually like that effect a lot. Yeah, my shoulders are tense. It's been a long day. Long week, actually. Foot a little crazy place, a lot of wilderness around. Do you leave treats out for them? Oh, the music. Yeah, I was like, am I what? But I realized I... It's de it's definitely the hook. The hook had to have been inspired by it, at least. Okay. I just hit that with a little white. A little white highlight. Bring those edges up. take a little bit of just regular blue and I think I'm gonna sponge sponge eh? sponge on a little bit of regular blue on the body of this thing just to give it a little more pop and then I'm going with some silver using the sponge again. Then this one, I won't even go close to the edges. I'll just stay far off. Yeah. I think that was the right way to go. Just adds a little something, something visually. I can absolutely mess with that. I like that. Watch us walk home. We had uncle's trees. We'll get from the trees as I would shine red sometimes, which is interesting because both primates and humans don't um, don't have that feature. In our genetic programming, our eyes don't uh, reflect light like that, like other critters do. So that's fascinating there.
Yep, Bjorn, you're right. You rotate the sponge so you don't get the repeating pattern. Um, because the eye, you know, human eye, especially my eye is drawn to repeating patterns and things. I might even do a, a like a stencil logo on here, just like a water droplet. So it indicates what's in here because it's a multi-language, multi, -language, multi uh, you know, multi-species station. Starport, you know, all sorts of different races, species, uh, life forms come through. And while everyone needs water, some of them might not, you know, need H2O. They might need other types of water. They might be allergic because their system, you know, where they're from is, you know, not made for them. I don't know. But I just think that that would be a fun, fun little detail for them. Yeah. Coming from outer space and all of a sudden you see water, you see the droplet and you're like, oh, there's water there. Or maybe I'll do the hydrogen, oxygen. Maybe I'll do a molecule. That'd be fun. I say that'd be fun. Like, fun for who? Fun for me. That's about Refraction. Flying red eyes. I've yep. I've heard um, there are plenty of Bigfoot reports where the things have glowing red or yellow eyes. But um, human eyes again don't have that. Neither do primates. Their eyes don't reflect at night. So that's fascinating to hear, which, you know, then leads me to think that maybe this is not a, a primate, right? Or the one that you saw maybe isn't of the primates, you know, family. Maybe it was something else entirely, which is fascinating in its own right. Hear Miss Azrael outside the door, meowing. So you let me in. You're talking about Bigfoot, and I got stories. I've been an indoor cat my whole life, but I've seen things. I've seen things. And that is just Viking blue that I went over that industrial blue with. A little bit of cleanup quick here with this Viking blue paint. <laughs> Sister horseback riding. That sounds scary as hell. No matter what it was, you never want to come up on something that you don't know what it is. And then, it, you know, instantly it's bigger than what you thought it was. Then you have all the, like, the what the fucks and the, all that running through. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be scared shitless, too. Absolutely. 
And I'm sure the horses were, were not thrilled either. Oh. Love my little silver paint pen here. The little oddball details. down here oh thank you now I'm just taking care of some details like stuff I'm guilty of it it's stuff that only I'll notice but I like to go in and do it anyway and it's not even like a case of like oh I have to do it it's just something that I I know I will notice if I don't take care of it now. So I just do tend to go in and at the last second just fix up those little little items that would stick out to me later. And I'll put a, a handle on there too. Something that you can turn, you know, turn the knob to open it up. But for now, it doesn't need a handle. and a couple of like bare metal spots, rivet holes, things like that in certain areas, just to pepper it with a little bit more life and world usage. It's a trick I actually learned from watching people paint uh, Mandalorian helmets. You know, use the two different colors, add a little bit of silver, and it looks like chipped paint in certain areas, like really chipped down to bare metal. And it just adds, adds something to it. So I'm just going in in certain areas, like especially the areas where I spent, you know, putting dimples and things like that in there. Dents. Go around those dents. And it creates some depth. Yes, Miss Azrael, I hear you. She's like, hello, I'd like to come in there. Walk around for two minutes and then leave. Like I said, use this silver pen. Just hit in certain areas. Picking up high spots, making them glimmer. If I went over with blue a little too far on certain things, which like right here, I went over onto this repair metal. So I'm just hitting the corners of that, taking care of that. Um, around this X that I dug into the container when I was doing it. Put silver around that, make it pop. Do a couple of spots here and there. Samarian tablets. Yep. Yeah, that's true. You are 100% correct there. There is mention of a large um, large species on those tablets. And there's mention of giants and hairy, you know, ape men and all that stuff and men, you know, who are other species than humans that were large and hairy all over all sorts of ancient texts. So I don't discount it. I hear you, Miss Azrael. All right, so this yellow paint's still a little tacky. This is not a fast drying paint, apparently. So we're going to leave that alone. Um, what I will likely end up doing is, like I said, I'll probably put a symbol for water on one of these sides here, probably this side, just for doing that. 
Um, I'll probably hit this with a little bit of silver again. Then I'll do a rust wash on there. I'm not gonna do the rust wash right now. I'm actually getting ready to wrap up this stream because I am a little bit hungry. I know the dogs there are gonna want their dinner. And uh, you guys have been wonderful. You've been here for a couple hours. We talked for talked about Bigfoot for the first hour or so. Um, one of the people that came through, they shared their Bigfoot encounter with us, which was always very cool. I love when people participate and I love when people talk about that. I got Bukaki by Yellow Paint. Um, it's been eventful. So if you guys are new to the channel and you stayed through, I appreciate you coming and watching. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notification. I do live shows Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. I am on Toy Squad on Mondays at 6 p.m. most of the time. Fridays, World Maker Consortium, 8 o'clock on this channel and Rad Toys Galaxy. I am also appearing next week. Thursday on Toy Domination. I'm going to be working with, uh, hel helping helping Dom figure things out. All right, he, he clicks buttons, things happen. It's crazy. He needs a, he needs a steady hand, somebody with a little experience, somebody with a little bit of a, you know, natural talent. We'll call it. Um, but that's showbiz, baby. You know, when when something's going down and they say, man, this Dom guy, he's out of control. What are we going to do? We'll call famine, and that's what happens. Is I roll in seal the deal, help people out. <laughs> I'm kidding. But they, he asked me to come over and do the show. I'm excited to do that. And that's going to be on Thursday. So next week, it's going to be famine week, famine on Monday, famine on Tuesday, famine on Thursday and famine on Friday, all over the place. It's crazy. Thank you so much for coming to this cryptids and crafting today. I am famine again. If you want to help the channel, famine studios, or excuse me, my goodness, patreon.com slash famine studios 262 there's three different tiers there's a free tier go sign up it's a great way to keep track of things i post things over there that i don't post on instagram so be sure to give it a look i appreciate you guys there are shirts if you want to buy t-shirts there's a link in the description uh shirts are on sale for 16 bucks this week i believe go take advantage otherwise be well thank you guys all for being here mods thanks for being here and as always too sweet me guys watch out for that bigfoot when you're camping.